Okay, uh, we're going to talk about return on assets. Uh, the formula for, for return on assets is net income divided by total assets. Um, oftentimes, you will see return on assets abbreviated as ROA. Um, return on assets is similar to net margin. Uh, which is the same uh, effective formula, but instead of net income divided by revenue, uh, we take net income divided by assets. So return on assets and return on sales, you can see the difference is in the denominator that we use. It's the same uh, numerator in terms of net income. So now the key question that we can ask with return on assets is, what percent of every dollar invested is returned as profit? So let's look at an example using Hasbro. Uh, so for this ratio, we need to source the numerator from the income statement and the denominator from the balance sheet. So here are Hasbro's uh, 2018 year-end income statement and balance sheet. And we can see that net income on the left-hand side, or net earnings as they list it, was $220 million. And looking over to the balance sheet on the right-hand side, we can see that total assets was $5.2 billion. So using those two in our equation, we can take net income divided by total assets and arrive at a return on assets of 4.2%. So this means that for every dollar of assets invested in the company, Hasbro returns 4.2 cents. Is 4.2% good or bad? How do we evaluate it and how do we know? Well, uh, to evaluate this as good or bad, we need to compare Hasbro to its peers in the same line of business, which we've done here. On the chart on the left-hand side, you can see the return on assets for other toy companies. The industry ranges from a negative 10% for Mattel to a positive 25% for Lego. We can see that Hasbro is in the low end of the industry range. And on the right-hand side, we can see what's been happening over time. Um, Hasbro's return on assets used to be um, much better, uh, over 10% in 2016, and it's been deteriorating each year since. So in general, we like to see return on assets higher than lower, uh, and needless to say, they should be positive for a healthy company. If you see a return on asset over 15%, uh, that's generally considered quite good. In fact, less than 15% of the S&P 500 companies are currently achieving a return on asset better than 15%. But it does vary uh, quite significantly by industry. So the comparison to peer companies is very important with this ratio. And that's what we see in the left-hand chart. Increasing return on assets are generally preferred to decreasing, but we need to be careful if we find a company whose return on assets are significantly higher than in prior years and higher uh, relative to industry average. It might indicate that the asset base isn't being properly maintained. So there's two ways to increase the ratio. One is you increase the numerator, and two is you can decrease the denominator. So um, this is a ratio that's open to manipulation by taking assets off the balance sheet, uh, operating leases, sale lease backs, or related company asset sales. Uh, but as you can see, there are only two ways a company can increase this measure, either have more profit or fewer assets. So we have to be thoughtful in how we evaluate return on assets and always ask why uh, it's increasing and, uh, and how the company is achieving that.